Tulane gets a massive win over Memphis, 38-28. to And it's big because Tulane has a legit shot at the G5 uh, New Year's Six spot, which is huge for them considering they went 2-10 and last year. They are 7-1 and right now. Let's look at the uh, the stats on this game. Tulane went up 35 to nothing in this game and only won 38 to 28. Had an interception late in the ball game that sealed the deal with like a minute left in the game where Memphis was literally on the doorstep of the end zone and Seth Hennigan was running uh, trying to get the play in because they knew that they in zone 6 Tulane almost blew it. Yeah, they they legit almost blew this. Uh, almost blew the cover, almost blew the game. Like, they came out in the second half. Here's the drive chart early. 11 plays, 80 yards, and a touchdown to start. Then you come out, you punt on your second drive. On your third drive, you get the ball at the 12-yard line and score a touchdown. So, short field. Punt, punt, 10 plays, 70-yard touchdown, 10 plays, 53-yard touchdown, and you're up 35 to nothing because you had a uh, an interception return for a touchdown as well. If I'm not, uh, no, no, a uh, uh, fumble return for a touchdown. Like it was, Tulane destroyed them early. Uh, <laughs> double nil. No, that's Boise State spot. <laughs> uh, Boise's got too many losses already. Um, you you look at the penalties. Memphis didn't even have a single penalty in the game. They outgained Tulane four fifteen to three forty four. Um, they were able to pass the ball on them. Like, total plays, Memphis ran more plays. They had a higher yards per play. But when you make mistakes, like four turnovers, yeah. Humphrey said, uh, Michael Pratt's still doing it. Remember the look of fear on Lincoln Riley's face near the end of OU season opener last year? Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I don't know what happened to Tulane last year because they looked good against Oklahoma, and then everything just went. And I know that they they dealt with a ton of injuries, et cetera. But this is a good football team. Um, I'll tell you this. The offensive coordinator at Georgia Tech is, uh, uh, is it Chip Long? Yeah, Chip Long. And he was the offensive coordinator at Tulane for a year, and it just did not work. Remember, he was let go as the OC at Notre Dame, even though they had really successful years with him. He could not get along with Brian Kelly. He's just not been very fun, I guess, or easy to work with anywhere he's gone. It's it's really weird. So, yeah, I I look at this and I'm like, man, I just don't think that, like Tulane is is just a really really good team. They are great at fundamentals. Only four penalties on the day, zero turnovers. They don't beat themselves. You're gonna have to beat them. Um, at zone six, what if there's no ranked G five teams at the end of the year? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, it's whoever is the highest rated or highest ranked G five champion. It's going to get the New Year's Six bid. But I don't know who that would be. Uh, let's let's go on and pull this up. Let's look at Tulane's schedule and see what they've got left. They, uh, they have got Tulsa. They host UCF. They play SMU. Oh, and then they've got Cincinnati at the end. Oh, I don't know that I don't know that anybody in the AAC is great. Man, that's going to be rough. <laughs> Double O'Neill, then they just give it to another SEC team. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.